You're all right, love. Just made up your dinner. Well, Katrina said Emily can sit in with her when she finishes school. It's the only time she'll go in. I suppose we should go in ourselves. Yeah, let's just pray this is all over by tonight. Is Uncle done? Hiya. I'm glad nice to see you. Uh, sorry, I, I couldn't get here any sooner. Auntie Rose said you were away on business. Was it anywhere exciting? Uh, no, uh, just Dublin. Right, we should get in. Should we go and grab a coffee before they call us? Yeah, come ahead. It'll be fine. They've got nothing. Okay, well, good luck. Both of you. I've missed you. You are still going to come on holiday with us, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, I'd love to go. I just feel a little bit nervous because I've never done anything like that before. Well, as I said, there's plenty of time to practice in the pool. Um, I was thinking more about going off on holiday with a bunch of people I'd hardly know. Ah, well, if we did get in a bit of practice, then we'd uh, get to know each other a bit better, a lot quicker. Um, what sort of practice? Basic survival instincts. Should we say in about an hour? Um, I can't just get off, you know, I own my business. Mm, we'll take an earlier lunch, then. Um, there was something else I wanted to ask you as well. Go on. Look, I don't want you thinking that I'm getting all heavy or anything, because I'm not. About what? About us. Well, it's... A bit like me going away with you, actually. And I know we haven't been seeing each other long. And look, there's no pressure if you don't want to, because I won't be bothered, honest. Well, the thing is, when we dad and auntie are getting married next week, and I just wondered if you fancied coming, that's all. I'd love to. Honest. Well, if you meet me at one, you can fill me in on all the details then. OK. See you later. Mr Musgrove, you had had a dispute with Miss Shadrick several weeks prior to the party, had you not? Yes. I was driving a cab at the time. I picked her up. It was the early hours of the morning. She'd been to a party at a friend's house. And what state was she in? She was absolutely legless. She didn't even recognize me at first. She didn't recognize you? Not at first, no. She was talking to me like I was a complete stranger. She couldn't even remember her own address. She couldn't even remember her own address? No. Just as well we were neighbors. So can you tell us what happened when you returned back at Brookside Close? Yes, just as we came home, she threw up all of the cab. She vomited? Yes. Did she seem embarrassed? No, she didn't even apologize. In fact, she didn't even pay the fare. So she vomited all over your cab and then refused to pay? But she didn't refuse. She was just so drunk she walked off. There was no point in arguing with her when she was in that state. My wife called around later and picked up the money then. Your Honor, I really don't see what relevance this has. Your Honour, I think it's beneficial to the jury to build up a picture of Miss Shadwick's lifestyle prior to the party. I quite agree. You may continue, Mr. Coran. Thank you, Your Honour. Was this the first time that you'd seen Miss Shadwick in such an intoxicated state? No. It had become a regular thing. Uh, we saw her a few times, staggering out of taxis late at night, hardly able to walk or put her key in the front door. <laughs> what did you make of this? Well, to be perfectly honest, we just thought it was funny at the time. So it would be fair to surmise that for the residents of Brookside Close, it wasn't uncommon to see Miss Shadwick returning home in such states of disarray. No. Thank you, Mr Musgrove. Mr Musgrove, you are alleging that Miss Shadwick had had far too much to drink. Yes. You sometimes have far too much to drink too, don't you? I don't know what you mean. Well, were you not recently convicted of drink driving? Well, what's that got to do with anything? Well, I'm merely pointing out, Mr Musgrove, that you are not above criticism in relation to such matters as well. Now, you were at the party yourself, weren't you, Mr Musgrove? Yes, I went to see my other son, Ryan. Well, you ended up staying quite a considerable time, didn't you? Yes, I did, yes. Now, a witness claims he saw you leaving the room where Miss Shadwick was sleeping while fastening up your trousers. I was looking for the toilet. I walked into the wrong room, that's all. I thought it was the bathroom. When I saw the girl on the bed, I left. Were you, uh, drunk, Mr Musgrove? Yes. Thank you, Mr Musgrove.
Right, that's it. Just breathe normally. See? <laughs> right, next important rule is always break for a drink when you feel that one. <laughs> oh. oh, yep, this was definitely the right idea. Hey, I wanted to be able to go and down another course. Do you reckon we'll go down? Are you asking me to breach client confidentiality? No, I'm just asking your professional opinion. <sighs> well, I prefer to keep my work and my social life very separate, as our Katie discovered the other day. Yeah, but we should prefer social or we? Well, I think anyone that chooses work must have something seriously lacking, probably friends. Or cash. Well, my work's important to me, but if it was the main thing in my life, I think I'd top myself. Oh, well, there's nothing down for me, then. I've been so obsessed with work over these last couple of years, it's hardly been time for anything else. Well, that's because you own it. We'll have to do something about that, you know. All work and no play could make Jackie Dixon a very dull girl. Um, are you saying that I am dull? <laughs> would I? God, would I dare? <laughs> Don't I keep reading that you doctors are totally overworked with absolutely no time for social activities? Oh, we are. I just finished morning surgery, and this is medically prescribed. <laughs> Uh, New Year's resolution. At least three forms of exercise a week. In or out of the bedroom. <laughs> Take no notice of him. And you've kept it up all this time. <laughs> Don't get personal now. Hey, you know what I meant. You've got yourself alive one there, mate. <laughs> oh, what's all that about you leaving the room, zipping up your trousers? Why did they have to bring all that up? Made it sound like it should be you stood in that dock, not Luke. Why didn't they ever tell me? There was nothing to tell. It was just a simple mistake. Yeah, well, the barrister didn't make it sound like that. How's it going? Oh, from bad to worse. How do you mean? Let's all go and get a copper. She did say 15 minutes, didn't she? Yeah, must be great having all that power. Being able to take a break when you feel like it. She's probably got off for a line of coke or something. Matt! Well, it's true. All these upper classes are the same. Friends with a lot of judges, are you? It's just a well-known fact. Yeah, another well-known fact is that you live in cloud cuckoo land. Oh, be a minute. Heavy stuff, isn't it? Look, Alec, I really don't think it's a good idea for us to be seen talking in here, do you? OK, then. You're on. I'm in. Oh, brilliant. But first, hey. Yeah, I need to make a move myself. See you later. I wouldn't have thought she was your type. Well, after serving five years with Sarah, I'm not really sure what my type is anymore. Opening yourself up to new experiences, eh? Why not? You only live once. You never know, though. She might be the one. Oh, no way. I'm not looking for the one, and neither is Jackie, as far as I know. I'm just going to love her and leave her, then, eh? <laughs> what, like you with them? Diana, Kerry, Kathy, Dolores... OK, OK, I get the picture. <laughs> yeah, well, you shouldn't judge other people by your own standards. <laughs> She was flirting with nearly every fella there. I mean, one minute she'd be all over me. The next, she was all over our Luke. All over? Well, you know, just being very flirtatious. It was her body language, I suppose, and, and the way she was looking at people. And how was she looking at people? Well, the way you do when you want to cop off with them. I mean, you heard. Even her own brother thought she was acting like a slag. He wanted her to leave. Thank you. No further questions. Are you very close to your brother, Mr Musgrove? Yeah. So it would be fair to say you'd do anything to defend him? If he was innocent, yeah. Even if that included intimidating witnesses? I don't know what you're talking about. Is it not correct that you visited Miss Shadwick at her home and tried to persuade her to drop the charges against your brother? No. I object, Your Honour. There is no evidence that this witness brought pressure on Miss Shadwick in any way. If there was, it would not be evidence against your client, would it, Mr Carr, unless it was suggested that he put the witness up to it? No, Your Honour. I take it, Mr. Georgian, that you ask these questions upon instructions? Certainly, Your Honour. Then Mr. Georgian is perfectly entitled to ask the question, and the witness is perfectly entitled to deny it. That is the end of the matter. Nobody is suggesting that the defendant asked Miss Shadwick to withdraw her evidence, and the witness has denied that he had. Under the circumstances, it becomes irrelevant, and you must put it from your minds. I shall not refer to it again. I'm sorry, Your Honour. Mr. Musgrove. How can you be so confident that your brother is innocent? Because he never left me sight long enough to rape anyone. Yes, so you claim. <laughs> That's true. So he was never out of your sight for more than five minutes? No. Never? At any point during the evening? No. Uh, remember, you're under oath, Mr Musgrove. I'm telling the truth. You have absolutely no doubt about that? 
No. So how do you explain his disappearance earlier on in the evening when he admits he was upstairs with Miss Shadwick? Surely you weren't with him then? Well, ap apart from then. Mr Musgrove, you've just told the court your brother was never out of your sight for more than five minutes. That was a lie, wasn't it? But he wasn't. I mean, apart from that one time. Mr Musgrove, I put it to you that you would do anything to defend your brother, including lying under oath. Oh, that's not true. Isn't it? He didn't do it. Well, how are you so certain about that? Because it was that Harvey fella, her mate from university. He even admitted it to me. It should be him in that dock, not our Luke. Members of the jury, an important legal matter has arisen. I would ask you to withdraw while it is dealt with. Is it correct, Mr Georgeson, that a Harvey Fairhurst admitted this crime? He made an admission to Ryan Musgrove to that effect, Your Honour, but when the police investigated it, he immediately uh, withdrew his admission. <clears throat> Indeed, it seems distinctly possible uh, that Ryan Musgrove forced the admission out of Mr Fairhurst by using violence. Mr Fairhurst had sustained certain injuries. I see. Were you aware of all this, Mr Curran? Yes, Your Honour. The prosecution did disclose it to the defence. It is no part of my case that the real attacker of Miss Shadwick was Mr Fairhurst, simply that it was not my client and could therefore have been anyone else. If I tell the jury, therefore, to disregard the allegation that Mr Fairhurst admitted the offence, would you rest content with that? Yes, Your Honour. Have we told you I'm being stalked? By who? Mark. Not oh, Victoria's Mark. Who else? Well, you did promise to have a chat with her. I know, I know. Well, we all know how she feels, except him. The three messages I've had on my mobile this morning. Oh, God, why can't he just accept that it's over between them? I can't keep ignoring him forever. I'm going to have to get back to him eventually. What am I going to say? The truth? I can't. It'll kill him. I mean, no matter what we think about him, the poor bloke's genuinely besotted with it. Sometimes cruel to be kind. Oh, why me? Anyway, I don't know why you don't jump at the chance to put him straight. How do you mean? Oh, come off it. Don't be playing the innocent. This is your big chance. You may as well grab it while you can. I don't know what you're talking about. I think it's about time you admitted it to yourself. Admitted what? Oh, you fancy Victoria for years. Everyone knows that. Here's your golden opportunity to do something about it. How do you think it's going? Well, we could have done without your little outburst. What sort of family are the jury going to think we are now? Do you think it'll go against us? They can only go on the evidence they've got. And to be frank, there's not very much of it. So, what happens now? Well, I'll be summing up after lunch, then I'll be down to the jury to go off and reach a verdict. How long do you think that'll take? It's impossible to tell. But you must have a good idea what the outcome's going to be. I've said all along I'd be very surprised if they get a conviction. And do you still think that? It's not my decision to make, Mr Musgrove. It's in the hands of the jury now. We'll just have to keep our fingers crossed. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, over the last couple of days, you have heard evidence from various witnesses who testify that Luke Musgrove drugged and then raped Nicholas Shadwick in the bedroom of number five Brookside Close. A cold and calculating attack on a vulnerable young woman. You have heard evidence from Nicola herself that earlier on in the night she was engaged in an embrace with Mr Musgrove. And she did indeed follow him into the bedroom where they continued to kiss. It was only when he attempted to take matters further that Nicola Shadwick decided she didn't want to participate. Now, if she had wanted to have sex with Mr Musgrove, she had the opportunity to do so there and then. But the fact of the matter is that Nicola Shadwick did not want to have sex with him, and she couldn't have made it any clearer. Now, you also heard that Nicola Shadwick was a virgin prior to the party. She knew what she wanted. And that wasn't some sordid, drunken, sexual encounter in an upstairs bedroom at a party in a neighbour's house. The truth is, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, that Nicola Shadwick had been drugged. Drugged by the man who had earlier pursued her and whom she had rejected. The man who had previously taken her into the bedroom in the hope of taking advantage of her being in an intoxicated state. Now, Nicola Shadwick's own brother, 
I'd spoken to her literally seconds before she entered the room. And Mr. Musgrove was there to witness the conversation. Did he share Nicola's brother's view that she was indeed drunk and should return home? Oh, no. Because Mr. Musgrove only wanted one thing. But his plan didn't come to fruition. He was left feeling bitter and rejected. So what did he do? He returned downstairs to the party where he slipped a drug into the drink. And then he waited. He waited till Miss Shadrick was in such a state she could hardly walk and had to be virtually carried upstairs to the bedroom. And while she lay on the bed under the effects of the drug administered by him, Mr. Musgrove returned to the bedroom and raped her. And how do we know this? We know this because Nicola Shadwick saw him. Now, you heard that the day after the party, Nicola Shadwick was completely disorientated and had no memory of what had happened. This is hardly surprising given the strength of the drug she had unwillingly and unknowingly taken. And you heard evidence from Dr. Josephine O'Keefe, a psychiatrist who is an expert in these matters. And she verified that the flashbacks Nicola began to have several weeks after the incident were perfectly normal and that there is absolutely no reason why they shouldn't be considered as reliable evidence. And let us remind ourselves again of what Nicola saw. Luke Musgrove. Luke Musgrove, members of the jury, lying on top of her. She saw his face, she heard his voice, he was having sexual intercourse with her. He was hurting her. She wanted him to stop, but she was powerless to do so. You heard the following morning. Miss Shadwick's father accidentally disposed of the sheet from the bed, effectively destroying any real chance of the police discovering any DNA evidence. But let's consider the evidence we do have. There's the bottle Miss Shadwick was drinking from, the bottle which contained traces of a tranquilizer. This, without question, proves that she had been drugged against her will. But more significantly, there is the shirt button. Luke Musgrove's shirt button, which was found on the bed the day after the rape took place. Now, you heard Mr. Musgrove in his testimony claim that he was never near the bed on any occasion. So, what was his explanation? He said it must have fallen off when she stumbled against him. But they were standing by the door. I put it to you, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, that the only way that button could have ended up on the bed was because it was the very same bed on which he raped Nicola Shadwick, a defenseless, vulnerable young woman who was absolutely incapable of fighting him off because Mr. Musgrove had made absolutely certain of that. May I suggest, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, that you find Luke Musgrove guilty on both counts. That is the case of the prosecution, Your Honour. <coughs> Mr. Coran. Uh, members of the jury, the first thing I'd like you to ask yourselves is this. What evidence is there that this is indeed a case of unlawful sexual intercourse? You have heard from various witnesses that Miss Shadwick was heavily intoxicated, behaving in a flirtatious manner. Indeed, at one point, she even went into the bedroom with a man that she barely knew. Does this really sound like the behavior of a virgin who is saving herself for the right man? Indeed, even Miss Shadwick's own brother found her behavior embarrassing and intolerable. The police have statements from 17 people who say that they saw Miss Shadwick behaving in this manner. 17 people, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. These 17 people also say that the last time that they saw Miss Shadwick was when she was taken upstairs by Michael Dixon, whose testimony you have also heard. In not a single one of these 17 statements is Luke Musgrove's name mentioned. What you as the jury must accept is that there is not a single shred of real evidence to link Luke Musgrove to the charges made against him. No DNA, no forensic evidence, absolutely nothing. The prosecution called a psychiatrist to testify to the reliability of Miss Shadwick's memory. In my cross-examination of the witness, I asked her if it could be possible that Miss Shadwick was so desperate to find answers that on hearing of Luke Musgrove's arrest, 
She had simply convinced herself that it must be him. The witness replied that, although it was unlikely, it could not be ruled out. Well, if it cannot be ruled out, then surely some doubt is cast upon the version of events Miss Chadwick later claims to have remembered. Then, of course, there's the shirt button. The shirt button which was found on the bed. A shirt button, members of the jury. Now, you heard in Luke Musgrove's testimony that he'd been in the room with Miss Chadwick earlier in the evening. She'd stumbled and grabbed hold of his shirt to steady herself. Now, it is perfectly plausible that the button could have come off then. But how did it get on the bed? How indeed? Especially as we've already heard that the following morning, Miss Shadwick had removed the sheet from the bed. In which case, surely the button would have fallen on the floor. Perhaps it's just one of those things that will remain a mystery. But one thing is certain. Not by any stretch of the imagination could it be considered strong enough evidence to convict a man of so heinous a crime. As for the charge of administering a noxious substance, well, you've already heard me say in my opening statement that once again there is not a single shred of evidence to support that Luke Musgrove was responsible. Not a single shred, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. So, how can we be 100% certain that this is a case of rape, as the prosecution have referred to it? Could it not just be the familiar tale of a young woman who goes to a party, has too much to drink, loses control, loses her virginity, and later regrets it? And who did she lose her virginity to? Well, that is something that we, or Miss Shadwick, will never know. Such is the lack of evidence. In these circumstances, is it any wonder that a young woman should cry rape? But even if Miss Shadwick's claims of rape are true, then still the chances of discovering who was responsible are virtually nil. Because any number of men who were present on the night in question could have perpetrated that crime, so weak is the evidence against Luke Musgrove. Members of the jury, you have a right and a duty to give the only verdict that can be considered. I ask you to find Luke Musgrove not guilty of both charges. That is the case for the defense, Your Honor. In an hour or two, that tow rag will be checking back into his cell for a long, long time. Do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty? I want to spend the night with you. <laughs> Have you been drinking? I couldn't have got through the last week without you. They've gone back, love. sit in the front, cos if I go in the back, I get car sick. Nick, I feel like an idiot sat in the back. Just get in the car, will you? Morning. Do you think I get a verdict today? I hope so. The judge starts summing up this morning. Nicky, I hope everything goes the way you want it to, hmm? Oh, thank you. Come on, you lot! I haven't seen you for over a week. This is hardly the place. I know what I'd like to. What's she on about? Problems with her emergency. Oh, fancy bringing something like that up on a day like today. 
get on little jobs. I do have to take small jobs sometimes. I've still got to make a living, you know. What time's the doctor doing his rounds? What about now? We just hope they let him out today like they promised. I'll be off to court. Luke Musgrove gets weighed in today. Well, if he didn't do it. I just wish they'd go. I can't stand that Luke fella. I think he did it all. Too right he did it. I put money on it. Do you know what? I couldn't care less. I just want to get Willow. Members of the jury, you've heard the closing statements from both the defence and the prosecution. I shall now take you through some of the main points of evidence, things that you ought to consider carefully before reaching your verdicts. On one hand, the prosecution has painted a picture of a manipulative young man with only one motive, to have sexual intercourse with Miss Shadwick by any means possible, a man who set out to drug his victim and then rape her. On the other hand, the defence quite simply claims that there is no substantial evidence to link Luke Musgrove with these alleged offences. And indeed, these offences could have been carried out by any one of a large number of men. As both counsel have said, you must be sure of the defendant's guilt on either charge if you are to convict him. Did he have sex with her? If you are sure that he had sex with her, and this is a key point, why has he denied it? And if you are sure that he gave her the drug, why should he do it? To deprive her of the ability to resist his wishes? These are matters for your common sense assessment. I seek from you a unanimous verdict on both counts separately. Would you please retire and consider your verdicts? You all right? Fine. Well, in an hour or two, that tow rag will be checking back into his cell for a long, long time. That is enough, Jason. No, it isn't. I don't care if they hear me, because I'm right. Just leave him. I don't think he's got enough to cope with. I'm going for the coffee. Does anyone want one? No, it's hot. Where are you going? To the train, if that's all right with you. My dad's got the flame and mobile. Have you got yours? In here, are you joking? The last thing I need in here is hassle from work. Leave it. Sit down, will you? You're making us all nervous. No, nothing's happening yet. Yeah, I'll let you know. Well, I've missed you too. But you should be with your family. I need you at a time like this. How about later this week? I need to talk to you. There's things I need to say. Dad! I'll have to go. I'll ring you back. What do you want? What's up with you? Did the jury come back? No, I just wanted to use the movie. All oh, right. Joey. Antagonise. And. Antagonise. You're doing great, girl. <laughs> Helps take my mind off things. We're nearly there now. Nearly there. I can't bear the thought of him being sent down. He didn't do it. I know he didn't do it. And I thought I knew you. I'm sorry. I didn't mean that. I know we can't just carry on as before. But I want us to work. Can't we? Are you okay? We're okay. How about you and the Yiv? It's just a matter of waiting. I'm sorry you two have to go through all this as well. We wanted to be here. He's still a son to us, isn't he, Don? Yeah. Try and forgive Joey, please. Is there anyone else you want to add to the list? And at last, do you think you could concentrate on what's happening in your daughter's life now? <sighs> Sorry. 
Are those concerning Crown and Musgroves, please return to court. The jury's coming back. Can you get into court as soon as possible? You okay? I think so. You just hold your head up high, love, all right? Come on. Not you again. Oh, Jackie. Um, I thought you might be somebody else. Well, I I've just been held up. I haven't forgotten about the meeting. No. See you soon. Bye. <sighs> On the first count, that of rape, do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. Oh. On the second count, that of administering a noxious substance, do you find the defendant guilty or not guilty? Not guilty. And those are the verdicts of you all? Yes. Yes! I told you, Ma! Thank you very much, members of the jury, for the care with which you've obviously considered an unusual case. Please retire to the assembly area. This is a joke! You've got it all wrong! But he did it, for God's sake! Silence in court! Who did it if it wasn't it? He did it! This is our wrong! Order in court. You may sit down, Mr Musgrove. <laughs> What's going on? Your Honour, I'd now like to turn to the matter of Mr Musgrove's escape from custody. Carry on, Mr Jordan. Well, the facts are but he's been found not guilty. That doesn't count, do I? He's been attacked in his cell. He was subsequently moved to hospital in Liverpool. Go on, then. Go and get what you want. Hey, you mind how you go, kidda? Do you hear me? Hey? <sighs> Great to have him back home safe and sound, isn't it? <laughs> Don't take him back found next door, love. <sighs> Don't push me, Jim. Yeah, but we've got him back. Isn't this the big chance to start again? You know, start fresh, like. Look, love, I've been thinking about what you said, and it's sinking in. I haven't been a decent husband. I haven't been a decent father. But I'm prepared to try again. How many times have you said that? I know that. Look. I don't want this rubbish anymore. I want to forget about the drugs, the prison, the past. Me, you, and the little fella in there, that's our future. With Wills being in hospital, it's brought it home to me. What's the most important thing in my life? It's you and the kids. I couldn't have got through the last week without you. Then come back, love. Please. Well, someone wants to come back. I think he's made my mind up for me, hasn't he? Your Honour, my client was wrong to abscond. But I ask you to take into account all that he's been through. He has been in custody since January. Indeed, he turned 21 while on remand. Now, this is bad enough for Mr Musgrove and his family, close-knit family that they are, but the straw that broke the camel's back, leading him to abscond, was the fact that while he was in prison, he was attacked by two other prisoners. Now, I've no need to tell your honour of the rough justice handed out to those accused of sexual offences even before they've entered a plea. But in this case, the plea was not guilty, and the jury have acquitted him on both counts. I would put it to your honour that no further period of imprisonment should be imposed, serious though escape is. Thank you, your honour. He's right, love. Don't worry. They won't jail him, Mum. He's been in too long. Please stand up, Mr Musgrove. Luke Musgrove, you have pleaded guilty to escaping from custody whilst on remand. The fact that you have been acquitted in both charges is of no relevance to this fact. 
You were taken to a hospital outside the prison. From there, you made good your escape. To your credit, you surrendered yourself to the police. However, the fact that you were at large caused a full-scale police operation, which resulted in the waste of a great deal of police time and resources. No matter what deprivation you may have suffered whilst on remand, the court cannot condone this sort of behaviour. Even though you were innocent, you should not have run away. If everyone ran away, there would be a complete breakdown of our system of justice. I must make an example of you to others. I sentence you to six months in custody. With remission, you have a further six weeks to serve. Mr. Corr? Thank you, Your Honour. No, please, not prison. He should have got 20 years for what he did. He's innocent. I want him home. Silence in court. Take him down. No. Honestly, it could have been much worse. I can't go back there. It's not fair. I'm innocent. <laughs> Next door. Oh, things have changed. Me and your dad are giving us another go. Oh, Mum, that's great. Well, what happened with Will, you know, I don't know what I would have done without Jimmy to keep me going. We're a good team, aren't we? I don't want to lose that. Yeah, but is he going to cool a bit on all his projects at school? I mean, it's not going to work if he's working all hours, is it? Well, he says he will, but, I mean, he's gone into work this afternoon when Cannon said he could have the day off. Well, you should have made him stay. <laughs> I can't see with that, can I? Still, he said he'd be back in time to read Will's bedtime story, so... I'm back at school tomorrow. I suppose that's what it'll feel like. I signed on to this two-week business management course. <laughs> time management. Communication skills. Multi-level markers and love, it's all above my head. Well, mine as well at the moment, but I can't wait till tomorrow. Where is it? It's at a hotel in town. Right, I'd better get going. I've got a few things that need doing and work if I'm going to be a student for the next couple of weeks. You stick with it, love. I will, yeah. And just remember, you know where I am if you need me, or a bed. <laughs> Thanks, love. It's nice to know but I'm going to make it work. I might be wrong. What? I have to face it, don't I? I don't know who did it to me. He did it. Musgrove did it. I can't be sure. It could have been any of them. You had flashbacks. You stood up in court and said it was him. But how can I be sure? Perhaps I was wrong. Perhaps it was all in my head and all that stuff that Barrister was saying is true. He slept with someone and regretted it. No. That I was so out of it, I can't remember who did it to me. It's all been a waste of time. No, it hasn't. He did it all right. Why else would he send his brother out to put the frighteners on? I don't know. And why didn't he get the police onto us when we tried to get them out the house? I don't know. Because he's guilty and his scumbag family know he is. That's a miscarriage of justice. He should have got 20 years. What are you doing now? I want to know what happened at the court. Musgrove got off with it. So does that mean that he didn't do it? I think he did, but... I don't know. Emily, he did it. You can't say that now. I can't be sure now. Not after all this. To our Luke's verdict. To Luke's, Luke's verdict. verdict! He'll be home sooner than you think, love. Yeah. He knows he was an idiot for running away. He'll keep his nose clean inside. Yeah, but what if he gets beaten up again? Mommy's in the clear now. He's not a suspected nonce anymore, is he? You'd probably think he's some kind of ace escape artist, a prison hero. <laughs> Trust that fellow to come up with something like that, huh? Mum, don't worry about Luke. He'll be fine. But it's not justice. Mum, you've got to start thinking ahead for when he comes home. Our Luke can hold his head up high around here now. We all can, because the court decided that he didn't rape Nicky Shadwick. Ryan's right, love. Luke's just been punished for escaping, that's all. The fact that he's been acquitted of rape, that's what's important. It's not your fault they couldn't nail him. It was only lack of evidence. Yeah, we all know whose fault that is. 
What's that supposed to mean? Stop it. Mum, that's not fair. It's not me dad's fault. Blame the jury. Where do you go? Away from all this, cos I'm sick of it. I'm going to meet Kelly from school. Kelly? Kelly Musgrove, if you must know. You what? What have you got to do with it? We've been mates for ages, but we had to keep it quiet, cos they're Luke being charged. Well, now he hasn't done it. He has done it. I'm not soft. The court just found I'm not guilty. That means he hasn't done it. And he can't be done for it again. I don't care what you say. Kelly's my mate, and I'm going to see her. You stay away from here. Get to your room. No, I don't want you having anything to do with them or the family. Do as you told. And what are you going to say to me, Nan? Get to your room. You what? My Nan goes out with Kelly's granddad. You what? Get in there now. Hang on. What are you going on about? They really like each other. In fact, they get on great. But they've had to keep it a secret because of you. Don't talk rubbish. If you don't believe me, ask her. Ask her who took her to the Albert Dock and Chester Aces. And I bet you didn't know that one, did you? It's all my fault and all. No, it's not. Did you know about this? Or is this something else? You've managed to keep quiet like that Ryan business? No, I haven't. This is news to me and all. The girl only lives 50 yards away. You should have been able to see if they were knocking about together. And my mother, God almighty, why didn't you suss she was seeing Alec? I don't believe this. I didn't know. Yeah, cos you're never here. Meetings here, there and everywhere. Swanning off to London. Don't you come there. You're here as much as I am. Why didn't you notice? You know why. Cos you never notice anything anymore. Cos you're always walking round with your head up your backside for months now. I'm not staying here to be slagged off by you. No, because the truth hurts, doesn't it? I'll tell you what, you are not the man that you used to be. I never see you anymore. You never talk to me. What the hell's up with you? I'm sorry, Mum. Dad's going to be here to read the story, does it, son? I have to have your mummy to read it, won't you? All right, love. Oh, you met it by the skin of your teeth. I thought I was going to be doing this story. Yeah, just give us a minute. I can't stop. I've got the trucks! Do you think he's gone to me nans about the Musgrove's granddad? Oh, God, don't even mention that. Doesn't matter to me, you know. Kelly had nothing to do with what happened to all Alec. I know. I know, love. Go and look for him if you want. I don't expect you and my dad to babysit me day in, day out, act like he's did at Christmas. Oh, I meant to ask you. I'm supposed to be going to Brussels on Friday. Do you mean that? Just go, Mum. No, are you sure? I'll be all right. I know how much you really want this new job. No, are you definitely sure? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. You know, I'm sorry the way things have worked. I'm locked away forever. Oh, he'd nodded off by page five. <laughs> it's good to have him back safe and sound, isn't it, love? It is, yeah. <clears throat> You just been the toilet again? Eh, uh, yeah. <clears throat> what? That's three times since you came in. I know. I had a salad in the school canteen. Lettuce and stuff always makes me like that, doesn't it? Sure, it's not the chip we pay you had with it. No, I hardly touched it. It tasted funny. Listen, maybe you should go to the late chemist, you know, and get something. No, no, I'll be all right. <clears throat> Are you tired? No. It's all this tapestry rubbish, isn't it? You can't cope. No, it's not that. It's, um... It's something a bit more serious, love. What? Oh, John Howard collared me on the way out tonight. Wants to talk to me about the exam results. Oh, no. Exactly. I think he's just gearing himself up to give me the bullet. Oh, you wouldn't do that, Jimmy, surely. Love, my exam results were crap. Why keep me on? I mean, they've got to give me more money next term once I've finished my year's probation, so why not get shut now? Because you're good. 
Sometimes I wonder if I'm cut out to be a teacher. Yeah, Jim. It's in you, I know it is. But it's not enough. I haven't got the education. When it comes to staff room conversation, I'm not in their league. Because I'm a scally. That Miss Farris, who was having a meeting with me and Mr Howard, she's... Well, she's only a slip of a girl, but she's bright. She's intelligent, she's well-educated. I could never be like that. Couldn't you do the Open University like you were going to? Well, that might help. Oh, if it's just some soft dream. I couldn't hack it. I know I couldn't. I'm sorry, love. I tried to make things better for us, but I failed. And now I don't know what's going to happen to us. This time tomorrow, they could be serving me notice. Ago. I had to see you. Mm. I want to spend the night with you. <laughs> Have you been drinking? Only a couple. I'm not drunk. I just need you tonight. Well, this is... Oh, can you? What about Margie? Mick Musgrove is far not guilty. Oh. Me and Margie had a big bust up. I just don't want to be around tonight. Oh, <laughs> you should be there with them. I mean, what about Nicky? I've thought about nothing but Nicky for months. I just want you tonight. Oh. <laughs> Well, how would you explain it to Margie and the family? It's my problem, can I? Yes. I'd love you to. Why am I getting a phone to Deja Vu? It is a bit like Grand Oxter. I'm sorry, Jimmy, but I'm going to have to think twice before keeping you on next year. I'll always be there for you, you know. No matter what happens, I want you to know. Ronald and Anthea, you are now husband and wife. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Pops, I was just about to come and kick you out of bed. I should still be there. Never mind getting married. I've had to pinch a couple of these. I've ran out. Well, have you got the trots? Typical, isn't it? On today of all days. Oh, you'll be all right. One of my breakfasts will sort you out. I promise to cook one for Rachel. Well, don't tell me you're turning into one of these new men. Well, she's pregnant, isn't she? I want to look after her. Glad to hear that. Oh, no. I'm gonna have to go again. Dad? Dad, I'm gone. There's, uh, there's bound to be a coke behind here. That'll sort you out. Very funny, Michael. Very funny. Ooh. All right. Not feeling too good. 
Mm. Just a bit of a dicky tummy, you know. Oh, I bad point. I wish. I am surprised those Musgroves weren't popping a few corks yesterday. What with their Luke getting off? No, was found not guilty of the words you're looking for. Yeah, well, it's a matter of opinion, isn't it? I mean, different jury could have been a completely different outcome, couldn't it? The lad can't win, can he? Even when he's been proven innocent, he's still guilty, aren't all he? All right, all right, I'm just saying. Yeah, well, you wouldn't like it, would you? It was your lad getting all the flack. I do, I suppose. Why am I getting a feeling of deja vu? It is a bit like Grand Hawks Day. I couldn't handle a repeater last time. I think Ron's learned his lesson. Look, we're already late, come on. How's William? Mm -hmm. Great. Pan and Goldberg. I was really worried at one point. Yeah, I know what you mean, mate. I was the same with little Ruth. Oh, I wouldn't want to go through that again. Tell you what, it makes you take a long, hard look at your life, doesn't it? Yeah, but unfortunately, I don't particularly like what I see. Why haven't you patched things up with Jackie? Yeah, yeah, no, she's come back home with our wills. It's not that. It's my job I'm worried about. How come? <sighs> the headmaster wants to have a meeting with me. He's not impressed with the low marks the kids got for their history exams. Well, that's not your fault, is it? I mean, all you can do is teach them. You can't sit the exams for them. I know, but unfortunately, there's more to it than that. So where does that leave you? Good question. Well, I'm telling you something, mate. I'm terrified of the answer. What time do you get in? Late. Crashed over at Gozzi's. I had too much to drink. Mum was really worried. I oh, know I apologise to you this morning. You don't miss the night talking. What about me, I suppose? I'm talking about ourselves, actually. I'm sorry I left the way I did. Wasn't the best of days, though, was he? Everything just got to me. No, Dad. What are you doing, anyway? <laughs> Sorting my life out. I'm really sorry, Nick. I can't tell you how bad I feel. I already know, Dad. Never got rid of that bin bag, destroying all the evidence. Your dad of all people. You ain't a nap. I've let you down, haven't I? I've let you all down. Don't be soft. There's no excuse for it. Dad, will you stop blaming yourself? It's not your fault. I'll always be there for you, you know. No matter what happens, I want you to know that. I do. Come here. Oh, can't you wrap this for me? No, what has he wrapped it once? And anyway, I don't know why you unwrapped it in the first place. Well, I didn't know the weather would be back on, did I? Yeah, she doesn't know anything's possible with me, Dad. I just hope he manages to behave himself today. Well, right, just get in case he makes a show here in front of your punch boyfriend. Well, I wouldn't be surprised. Mm. You've been splashing out a bit. Yeah, well, I wanted to wear something nice for the wedding, didn't I? Well, what happened to the suit you wore last time? Exactly that. I bought it last time. Hey, I hope you're not going to go over the top. You wouldn't want to upstage the bride just to impress Nathan. Um, what's this about Laura? Oh, she rang in, she said she's not coming in. There must be a virus going on, she's got a bad stomach. Yeah. Why do you have to think the worst of everyone? Because she's always letting me down. Well, I'll remember that next time I'm handing out the overtime. Oh, um, by the way, I was going to ask you for a bit of overtime myself. What, you? Well, you usually can't knock off quick enough. Yeah, well, I've opened a little post office account, you know, so I'm not here for a big bill for cuts and crumbs when the baby arrives. Only it's left me a little bit skint. Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, is Rachel still getting ready? Yeah, she's uh, not feeling too good, though. She had some breakfast and then brought it all back up. Well, that's morning sickness for you. It's not going to last for the whole nine months, though, is it? Well, not usually. It should pass after a while. I mean, six weeks? What kind of a sentence is that? Come on, Luke. Got six months for abscond and that's all. He's already saved four. So why did he run away if he was innocent? Because he was scared stiff of going down for something that he hadn't done. Now, the jury has proved he was innocent. That's it. <clears throat> it's proved nothing to me, mate. And if he is getting released, I'm getting my place alone. I don't believe you. I don't believe you. What's about? I mean, how are we supposed to sleep at night when we've got a rapist living back on the closet? You just won't let it go, will you? <laughs> I wouldn't think you on this one. She must have been pretty sure that it was Luke Musgrove to take it that far. I mean, I feel really sorry for the girl. Yeah, well, I feel sorry for the girl as well, but she was wrong. And what if she wasn't? <sighs> what if it was the court that was wrong and he is guilty? Oh, come on, Mick. We can go on all night about what ifs. I mean, what if he hadn't done it and he'd been found guilty? What if Nicky Shadwick hadn't been raped in the first place? Oh, you're bound to respond like that. Oh. I mean, you're on his side from the start. It's not a question of sides. As far as I'm concerned, the jury had all the facts. They've made their decision, and we've just got to stick with it. Hiya. Hey, Nick. Is Jason still here? Uh, no. I sent him to do a tiling job on Digmore Street. His constant rabbit was doing me, I think. Can't you tell someone's got a bad hangover? The dirty stop out didn't come until all hours of the morning. Yeah, well, I'm paying for it now. Right, I'll leave you to it. 
on your way again. Oh, Susanna wants some quality time with the kids, so I thought I'd come over and see how you're feeling. I just feel like my mind switched on to autopilot. Just talking like the way people want me to. <laughs> Why? Just makes it feel so much easier. I mean, if I let myself get upset, then my mum and dad start blaming each other. Then it's just non-stop bickering and arguing, then. You've got to let them know how you feel. You can't just bottle things up. I don't even know how I feel. It changes by the minute. I'm confused. Then I get upset or angry. Sometimes I even feel relieved. Relieved? Yeah, that it's all over and done with. And I never have to stand up in that court again. I'm just sorry I went through with it all now. All I got from everyone was, go through with it, Nick, and he'll be punished. So we did. And look what happened. We all feel like we let you down. Oh, you haven't. No one did. I was just so convinced that it was him. And if it wasn't, I wouldn't have put myself through all that or him. Just because he was found not guilty doesn't mean he didn't do it. You're the only one who knows it happened to you, not them. I just feel so ashamed, Treen. All that jury must have thought I was a big liar. No one said they didn't believe you were raped. They just couldn't prove it was Luke Musgrove. Nicky, you've got nothing to be ashamed about. That was Megan. She was just checking that everything's going according to plan. Yeah, well, this wasn't part of the plan. I feel awful, Michael. Would you get us a glass of water, please? Dad, how many times are you gonna have to go to that toilet? Tell you what, it's a good job I am moving in with Anthea after the wedding. I don't think the drains in that flat could take much more. Oh, Dad, you'd have to. Look the old Anthea, eh? Oh. God, I feel terrible. Well, I think it was the first time you're getting married the way you're carrying on. Michael, it's nothing to do with that. I think it's something I've eaten. Me and Anthea went for a meal on that shelf last night, you know. You don't think it could have been that, do you? No, I do not. More likely what you had to drink. We hardly had anything. One glass of wine. Dad, you're not going to carry on like this all day, are you? Jacqueline, I can't help, but I'm not well. OK, I'm going to check on Rachel, make sure she's all right. Why, what's wrong with her? Uh, she's not feeling too well. She's got a bit of a bad stomach. That's a coincidence, isn't it? Hey, she hasn't been for a meal at that shelf and all, has she? Dad, she's pregnant. She's got morning sickness. You don't think it could be anything else, do you? No, it's morning sickness. Take it from someone who's has it. Hey, two women in our place have been offered stomach upsets. Irene Jones and that Margaret... What's her name? You know, the one who comes and cleans it here sometimes. Yeah, and one of our barmaids rang in sick, said she was up all night with a bad stomach. You don't want to be listening to what she says. Something's not right here. We're going down like flies. Somebody round here is dishing out dodgy food. It's food poisoning, you know, it's got to be, because... No, not again. You don't think it is food poisoning, do you? The only thing he's suffering from is an attack of the pre-wedding nerves. I can only apologise once again, and uh, I can assure you that we're doing everything humanly possible to try and sort out this dreadful matter. Problems? That was the museum again, trying to find out whether we've located the missing costumes yet. Still no sign of them. How can anyone in their right mind leave valuable costumes out during the half-term holidays? And if that's not enough, it appears that someone has been using the school computer system to set up an illegal website. It appears they have a passion for druidism. You know anything about it? I haven't the foggiest. Why are you asking me, like? The address, I believe, is on the same close where you live. I can't help you. Oh, don't worry. The school secretary's going through the registers as we speak. Well, then, better get down to the real reason why I asked you to come and see me. There you go. Well, how do I look? You look great. You just make sure you behave yourself today. What do you think I'm going to do? You think I was a child? Where are you carrying on? Rach, are you sure you're up to this? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm a little bit hot, that's all. I probably just need some fresh air. Hey. You all right, love? Yeah, I'm fine. Listen, I won't be offended if you don't go to the wedding, you know. I wouldn't be going myself on the end of the groom. <sighs> don't even think about it. Right, shall we make a move, then? Um, hang on a minute, Nathan isn't here, yes? He won't turn up. Won't be grand enough a wedding at a registry office. You know, I don't even know why you... I'm sure by now the staff room is ringing with chatter about the disappointing exam results. I know, they were lower than we'd hoped for. You may also be aware of talk of change. I'm going to be perfectly frank with you, Jimmy. The history exam results were simply not acceptable. The achievement level was way below standard. They had gone a minute. 
Those kids were underachieving long before I got here. You're absolutely right, but it can't go on. And I thought you wanted me to concentrate on the kids who aren't taking exams. The 20% who won't get qualifications. You see, Jimmy, it doesn't matter how forward-thinking or well-meaning people might want to be. It all comes back to results. Your success, my success, the success of the school, unfortunately, depends on good exam results. So I take it we're not focusing on those kids anymore. The school's attainment levels must take priority. So what are you saying, Mr Howard? I believe in this school. I feel I can turn it around. But to do that, I need to get good results and to build up a good, strong reputation. And to do that, I need the right kind of teacher. So where does that leave me? I'm sorry, Jimmy, but I'm going to have to think twice before keeping you on next year. Well, don't pass out till after the wedding. I'm not going through all this again. I hope it's not going to be like the last fiasco. <laughs> Megan's just been telling me about this being a replay. Not really. He's not trying to get out of it, is he? Well, I don't really think he'd be here if he was. He's not too well. Neither of them are. What's the matter? I think it might be a bit of food poisoning. It's probably just morning sickness. Can we get things going, please? Uh, yes. Uh, you'll have to fill in the necessary documentation with the registrar. Yeah, yeah, OK, OK. Can we just get on with it? Uh, right. <laughs> if you'd uh, care to go in. Oh. You are very alike, aren't you? <laughs> well, we are sisters. Well, half-sisters, anyway. I wonder if you're similar in other ways. <sighs> Not in that way. Looks like you're doing a good job there. Jump in if you want. Uh, no, you're all right. Not all blokes are the same, you know. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to make you feel uncomfortable. How are you, anyway? What do you think? Most of the time, I feel like my life's not even worth living. <laughs> I know how you feel. And it makes me laugh all of a sudden. Everyone seems to know what it feels like to have gone through what I've gone through. All right, then I don't know how you feel. But I do know what it's like to hurt. I'm sorry, I, I didn't mean to have a go at you. <laughs> it's all right. I shouldn't have said it. I remember when my dad died, people used to say to me all the time, I'd be thinking, how can you possibly know how bad I'm feeling? Get you down, doesn't it? Have they told you you'll get over it, yeah? I think they're waking up to that one. You'll be all right. You've just got to deal with things the best way you can. But don't let it hold you back. Thanks. See ya. ta -da. Why did you um, walk away from me like that? Because I didn't find you very funny. Are you really that concerned about your father? It'll be OK. Seems like a tough old bird to me. <laughs> well, it's not exactly as Dickie told me that I'm worried about it. What sort of pantomime will he turn this into? So, um, does that mean we're friends again? Yes. Oh, are you made up about the baby? Yeah, I'm dead chuffed. Um, how long has Richard been in that toilet? She's just only gone. Well, you're a bit nervous about being a parent. No, I won't be. Having someone who relies on me for everything. No. It's made me realise, though, it's about time I got myself a proper job. You know, earn some real money. Any idea what you want to do? Um, no, not really. Um, I could do us a favour, Megan, go on the toilet, see if she's all right. Victoria told me it was definitely over with Mark. Do you think she really means it? Um, well, she sounded pretty convincing, which makes things all the more awkward. Why? Well, Darren said he promised to Mark he's supposed to be talking around. Oh, she'll go mad. Yeah, I know. I've tried talking him out of it, but... Um... Well, listen, I wouldn't get involved if I was you, but it sounds messy enough as it is. <sighs> You're probably right. Hey, don't you be getting all moody. We're supposed to be celebrating a wedding, not worrying about one that's on the rocks. <laughs> You're right. Oh, let's forget all that and focus on us. I want you to come um, clear pigeon shooting with me on Friday. <laughs> clear pigeon shooting? But I've never done anything like that in my entire life. Hmm, believe me, I've never done anything like this, but uh, it's the first time for everything. <laughs> Hi, Jimmy. Well, hi there. How'd you get on? Terrible. 
Right, sir. Ah, oh, the exam results weren't up to standard, and the headmaster's talking about letting people go. I mean, he's going to sack you? For want of a better word. Hey, that school's been getting disappointing results for a long time now. That's why I took our gym out. Tell me about it. There you go, mate. Bad time, too. Will the bride and groom please stand? Is your full name Ronald William Dixon? Yes, yes, sir. Is your full name Anthea Sarah Brindley? Yes. Before you are joined in matrimony, I have to remind you of the solemn and binding character of the vows. I'm really sorry, but I'm going to have to go to the... A marriage, according to the law of this country, is a union of one woman and one man voluntarily entered into for life to the exclusion of others. So you're going to come in? I can't. Madam's asked if we can sort out some tea. So I'm going to be round to the chippy. <laughs> <laughs> or for some deep-fried camembert. I'm a nanny, not a chef. So she'll have chips and ketchup, or she can lump it. <laughs> Just stay clean. I mean, and she's around to great grannies now, flying the flag at half-mast. You know, Mrs Jones, one of the cleaners, she died this morning of suspected food poisoning. I think your nan's Stephen Cleave me at the moment. Oh, uh, yeah. Look, I've got to give you these before. And what am I supposed to do with these? Decide where we're going. We agreed that once this trial was over, we said we'd get away. Oh, I don't know, Trina. I don't think I'd be very good company. I'm not asking you to keep me entertained. Just put some sun cream on my back every other hour. <laughs> It'd be nice to get away, wouldn't he? So that's what we'll do. Let me know when you've decided. OK, see you later. See ya. I call upon these persons here present to witness that I, Ronald William Dixon, do take thee, Anthea Sarah Brindley, to be my lawful wedded wife. To witness that I, Ronald William Dixon, do take thee, do take thee, Anthea Sarah Brindley, be my lawful wedded wife. Oh. I call upon these persons here present to witness that I, Anthea Sarah Brindley... Is it um, traditional for the groom to dance during this kind of ceremony? Shh. Do take thee, Ronald William Dixon, to be my lawful wedded husband. Do take thee, Ronald William Dixon, to be my lawful wedded husband. We now come to the exchange of the rings. Oh, buddy. There you go. Get on with it, will you? Will you please turn and face each other? And take the ring you are giving to each other and place it on the third finger of the left hand. Please repeat after me. I give you this ring as a token of our marriage and a symbol of all that we share. I give you this ring as a token of our marriage and a symbol Oh, that we share. I give you this ring as a token of our marriage and a symbol of all that we share. That concludes the ceremony. Ronald and Anthea, you are now husband and wife. <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> don't believe me then if you don't want to. I don't. Have you heard about this mystery book that's been going around? Did you on a box? Find your space, please. Well, ask your boyfriend, then he should know. It's his man who's been going about telling everyone. Jesse? Oh, she told me he's not about Mrs. Jones down this morning. Oh, you're talking about it. See, I told you. Who's Mrs. Jones? Well, she used to work with Jesse and the great grannies. I mean, I've heard of her. Her name doesn't ring your bell. What do you do, Irene? Cleaner, she was always in here. Well, I hope it's not contagious. What did she die of? No one knows for sure. But you think it was a food poisoning? Do you um, want me to go and see if he's all right? No, you're all right. I'll go after him. Come on, Rachel, I'm taking you home. No, you're all right. I'll get a taxi. Don't be soft. I'm taking you home now. But you won't get on the any of the wedding photos. Look, don't worry about that. I'm more concerned about you and what it could be doing to the baby. Come OK, on. but tell your dad we're leaving. You all right, Dad? Ron, what's going on? We're not properly married yet. We've still got to sign the register. You're not going to believe this, but Mrs Jones is dead. Irene Jones, the woman who cleans for us. He's not. What? Uh, Mrs Jones has died, apparently. Oh, when? 
This morning, her husband just tried to register her death. What did she die of? I don't know. They still haven't done the post-mortem. But from what her husband said, she had exactly the same symptoms as me. Um, you'll have to excuse me. I think I am. <laughs> Dad, stop being so paranoid. I think you should go and see a doctor, Dad. I'll be seeing a doctor, all right. And I'll be getting on to the environmental health as well. Environmental health? I've been poisoned, and so was Mrs. Jones. You don't know that. It must be. And whoever's responsible has got to be stopped. It's probably just a bug. This was meant to be the happiest day of my life. A brand new start. And if I have got the same illness as Mrs. Jones, you know what it means, don't you? It's the end. You'd be a widow in a week, love. Okay, well, barring an outbreak of dysentery, I shall see you here then. Bye. If you fancied a quiet evening in with me, you could always cancel that. I accessed this on an unauthorized website in the school computer system. And there's been a change of plan. I won't be needing you after all. Didn't Katrina call you? Hugh Fernley Whittingstall gets a little testy at an astrological dinner party and does something unspeakable to raw chicken, all in the quest for more TV dinners. <laughs> It's definitely some sort of food poisoning. Some honeymoon for the night. We both go to Windermere for a few days, but that's been shelled. I had Spanish Tommy when I was away from the mum, and that was bad enough. Andy's having to wait on him hands and foot. He's playing it up so much, being the master and that. I even offered to cancel my date with Nathan this afternoon. Oh, why? I wondered why he was doing nearly dark today and telling me to take the rest of the day off. <laughs> Have you cancelled? No way. My dad said you go out and enjoy yourself, Jack, and while you still can. He's dribbling here. Is he OK? Oh, he's teething, that's all. Are you still up for this drink tonight? Yeah, if you like. But if you don't feel like it, there's no need. Oh, no, I'm up for it. But if you're not sure... God, you sound like my mother. I had to force it this morning to go on that trip to Brussels. Everyone's worried really about all. About what? That I got it wrong and that rapist is still out there. Nick, the courts aren't perfect. Everyone knows that guilty man can walk free. Just be thankful that Musgrove didn't and cough for a bit longer inside. I don't know I'm going to face him when he comes out. That's weeks off. Just forget all that crap you've had since Christmas and start enjoying yourself. I know you've been flicking through those Aldi brochures. <laughs> oh, hi, Nicky. How are you? I'm OK, thanks. I'm sorry to hear about the trial. Um, Susanna, Nicky's been feeling a bit down these past couple of days and I was wondering if I could have a few hours off. He needs to take her for a drink. <laughs> I mean, Nan could babysit for a couple of hours. That's fine. Katrina, if you could phone Jess and make all the arrangements with her. Hmm? <laughs> Oh, I can do that. Bye-bye, darling. Bye-bye, <laughs> Harry. Bye-bye, <laughs> Nikki. Have a good night. I'll see you both later. Bye. Yes! Time off. <laughs> Are you sure you don't mind phoning your nan? Only we haven't spoken since. I'll phone her now, but you owe me a drink, OK? <laughs> Did you manage to explain yourself the other night? Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Kevin, for that. I can't get over you clambering over that fence like that, like an SAS man. Man on a mission, eh? Mmm, to tear my silk nightdress. I know, I'm sorry about that. I'll have to get you a new one. <laughs> to tear it all over again. Yeah, Um. Listen, Margie's gone away today. Oh, for the whole night? Yeah, yeah, she's in Brussels, so if you fancy it, we could drive out to town, find a nice quiet restaurant somewhere for a meal. I can do better than that. Oh, why? Katrina's asked for the night off to take Nicky out. Jesse is supposed to be babysitting, but um, if you fancied a quiet evening in with me, I could always cancel that. How lucky can you get? Two nights in the same week. That's what I was thinking. Can't wait. Me neither. I better get these back to the club before I go and get changed. So where's Nate taking them? I'll have to get my skates on. I don't even know where I'm going to wear, yes? Come on. 
Where are you going? Somewhere posh. Oh, not to go be diving again. Mind that, Rogers. And um, I don't want him that flat again when I get back. No worries. <laughs> Jackie, I've been looking for you. Oh, it's not a problem, is there? Oh, no, I wonder if you could do me a favour. Could you manage without me tonight? Only, um, something's cropped up. Oh, uh, so that's why you're looking like a million dollars. <laughs> oh, thanks. Uh, could you? Um, yeah, I think so. Well, I'd ask Lindsay, but she's not around. Oh, that's because she's swanned off on this business management course. Oh, we can't blame her for enrolling. Perhaps we all should. Well, I just wonder what Cruella's idea of the business course is. How to shoot a gangster from the hip, how to carry off a shoulder holster under a silk blouse. <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> so I'm OK for tonight? Yeah, you're fine. Oh, listen, if you're going back to the club, can you stick this in the drawer and reception? Yeah, certainly. Thanks. Right, see you tomorrow. Susanna. Uh-huh. There's something that's just cropped up. I hope he's worth it. No, I can't tell you what it is over the phone. What time will you be back? Yeah, that's fine. I'll be out of eating surgery by then. OK, well, barring an outbreak of dysentery, I shall see you here then. Bye. Hot date, then? I'm just Victoria. Oh. She's not everyone's cup of tea. Takes all sorts, I suppose, like my boss and Jackie. <laughs> True. Not exactly the most obvious genetic match, but... All sorts. Um, can I have two bottles of mineral water still, please? So, is he really into Jackie then? Mm, well, there must be something wrong with his hormones if he's given you the afternoon off. It's not that far gone. I've just been sent out to get the bits he forgot for his picnic with Jackie. I mean, is he being straight with her? He's not going to lag it back to his wife and then dump Jackie. <laughs> Sarah is history. Definitely. Cross me heart. Not a bad brummy accent, that. <laughs> <laughs> only, um, your friend Victoria said you lot were only living here temporary, like. Really? So, can't you trust him not to do one? Well, I don't know. All I can say is that there's definitely something there, all right? Just the job for shooting. Shooting? What are you doing, going shooting, shooting what? Nathan's gonna show me how to shoot plays. What? Pigeons. That's typical of him, taking you to do something cruel. It's awful what you're doing, shooting birds. Just little round ones made of tarry stuff. They don't feel a thing, just like the real ones. Very funny. Well, I do like this. Great. You be careful messing with guns. Do you want me to shoot them for you? Mm -hmm. Don't ask. <laughs> oh, I hope I'm going to be able to do this. Oh, don't worry. He's not exactly Olympic standard himself. Probably give him a thrashing. Oh, what, just like you did last time? Forget the hype. He's strictly second rate. Ready? Um, I'll just have a quick word with Almighty, then I'm all yours. I'll wait in the car. Okay. <sighs> Hang on here. Let me see. Uh, definite hormonal imbalance there. And how's your love life? I'm too busy trying to sort out Victoria's. I told you, forget that. Well, Mark practically begged me. I just. I feel obliged somehow. Mm. Obligation. Now, that's a millstone we inherit, isn't it? <laughs> Too deep for me this morning. Yeah, and for me, but uh, one day, Robot, one day. But right now, it's not Mark you should be worrying about, but yourself. From where I'm standing, you should uh, be making a pitch for yourself. Come in. Ah, oh, well. If it isn't the disciples of Shad. I've just been speaking to the chairman of the school governors. He takes a very dim view of stealing from the school. So, how do you explain these? I accessed this on an unauthorised website in the school computer system. Oh, them? Yes, them, Musgrove, with your home address prominently displayed. Well, we would only have a laugh, see? But it's no laughing matter. It may have been some sort of joke to you. But this is the deliberate misuse and theft of school resources. But we didn't steal anything, sir. You used school power and the school telephone line when you set up this website without permission, which is theft. And to make matters worse, you advertised goods for sale. It is absolutely against all the rules to use school premises and resources for any kind of trade or business. Sorry, sir. That's not good enough, Boscombe. The Department of Education doesn't provide computers so that people like you two can set up half-baked, get-rich-quick schemes. But say you're always going on about IT. I wish to learn more about it and I was the future of everything. 
Were you being enterprising? We were very enterprising. You sneaked into school during half term to do this, didn't you? And don't try to deny trespass on school property outside school hours. I know to the minute what time this website was set up. I want to know how you obtained a password to get into the net. Mr. Curtis from IT tells me that he certainly never told you, so what devious method did you use to get hold of it? Well, it's no big deal, sir. I'll decide whether it's a big deal or not, Musgrove. I want to know. Well, the thing is, sir, uh, Mr. Curtis wrote the password on the back of the PC we used. What? Oh, well, I'll have to take that up with Mr. Curtis. But the fact remains that you were using school resources while trespassing on school property. And by some strange coincidence, on or about the same day, costumes on loan from the museum were stolen from Miss Farris's exhibition. Now, what do you know about that? Not on sea. Boscombe? It wasn't on sea. Well, do you know who it was? This is a very serious incident. No, sir. If you do, I strongly advise you to tell me now, because if I find out at a later date, I shall have no hesitation in prosecuting you or anybody else. Well, the thing is, sir, we saw those costumes that day we came in at half term. Didn't we, Bosk? Yeah. So we're witnesses that they were definitely still there at that point. Yeah, very well. Going back to the business of the website, I've deleted the entire thing myself, so don't expect any more customers for the magical stones of Shaft. You've deleted it? Oh, hey. Of course I have. I don't think you appreciate the seriousness of this, either of you. Well, perhaps you'll understand this. You're to leave the school immediately, and I hope you've passed your A-levels, because I won't welcome you back for resits. As for the matter of the computer business, that'll go in your school files for the benefit of any future employers. Go on. Howard. All right, Jesse. Hello. Jessie, Susanna's asked if I can get you to babysit these two for us tonight. Well, it's a bit short notice. I know. We tried ringing before, but, well, she could be the night off and... Well, I don't know if I should. I mean, I don't want to be seen to be interfering, do I? I'm sorry, I had a go at you. Well, I haven't noticed you knocking down my front door to tell me. I felt ashamed. I kept leaving it and I've been under a lot of pressure with Susanna. Well, I'm sorry. I suppose I shouldn't have said the things I did. I know you'd never do anything to harm these two kiddies. I shouldn't have slagged you in the street like that. I just flipped. I'm really sorry, Jess. Well, I'll believe you. Thousands wouldn't. You're going somewhere special with our Jason, then? Actually, I'm going out with Nicky to cheer up, you know. <sighs> she was knocked sideways by that ridiculous verdict. I know. Well, I dare say a night out on the town will do the power of good. Oh, what time do you want me to turn up at Susanna's? Eight to half past. Is that OK? Oh, thanks, Jess. We're shot. Can't you read? We're closed. It's Mr. Moore. You let him in? Yeah. Hi, Mr. Moore. Good afternoon, Timothy. Mr. Sweeney. Well, fancy seeing you again. Hey, you still sporting Wrexham? Hey, they could go all the way to the European Cup. Now they got Russia, eh? I'm not here to chat about football. Oh. Uh, well, listen, I know we're closed and that, but if you're feeling a bit peckish, we can rustle something up for you, can't we, Tim? Yeah, no problem. Oh, but I'm sorry. I don't do liver and onions. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, that, that, that's quite all right. I, I'm not here as a customer. I'm afraid I'm here in an official capacity today. Environmental Health Department. 
Uh, you work for them? It seems we have a localised outbreak of food poisoning, and we need to determine its source. Now, I need to check your premises and take some samples. Well, I better give Mick a ring, cos he's the owner. I'll get him right now. No, that, that won't be necessary, Mr Sweeney. I don't need any permission to do what I have to do. Would you show me your food storage areas? In particular, your refrigerators and freezers. Perhaps we could get on with it. Oh. Hi. Hiya. I've changed my mind about tonight. I can't have time off. No, no, of course you can. But I've decided to take the night off myself, so we won't need to bother Jess. I'll look after Harry and Emma. I've already told her to come round. Oh, well, if you could just ring and tell her we're sorry, but we won't be needing her. Right. Then you can go. Great, thanks. Oh, it's been a frantic afternoon. The environmental health people swooped down because of that food poisoning outbreak. They're checking everyone. Was it down to your restaurant? Oh, heavens, no. I suspect those microwave snacks they sell at the garage. There's no answer. I'll try later. Um, have you seen my breast pump? It's in the drawer. Oh. Why bother if you're staying in? Oh, I'm just a bit tired. Thought I might have a glass of wine. Or two. How long is this going to take? I have to proceed very carefully. It can't be rushed. But I've got half the day off, and I'm not getting paid for this. Oh, well, you can leave if you wish, Timothy, but uh, Mr Sweeney will have to stay. Uh, do you want me to tell me? No, I'll talk to him later, and I don't say anything to anyone else. OK, then, Mr Moore. I'll see you later. Uh, yeah, uh, goodbye, Timothy. Look, Mr Maul, it's not as if we don't know each other. I mean, can't you just tell us who put you onto this place? Oh, no, I, I can't reveal where I got my information from without their permission. Yeah, but it was Ron Dixon, wasn't it? No, no, I can't comment. Yeah, just see him pointing the finger at us. <sighs> we are making inspections at the other food outlets round here. Well, I'm supposed to be opening the shop up again soon, you know. Uh, that's all right. I'll uh, keep out of your way. We'll just have to get another computer. Oh, I yet. What with? We've got a load more checks. Use them. If I cash the checks without sending the gear, I'm going to have a load of angry hippies and weirdos knocking my door down. It was my address on the website, remember? We're just going to have to face them. Got any money for me? I mean, I'm all 300 quid left. Where's the profit? We've got a bit of a problem. The website's been wiped. You what? We've lost all the orders off our customers and we can't send any stuff out. We can't cash any cheques unless we want to get done. Well, who wiped it? The headmaster? Oh, brilliant. First, the druid stuff gets robbed, now this. Well, the Stones of Shad didn't predict this, did they? <laughs> Do you want to lift anywhere, girls? We're only getting to bar, Bucky. Oh, right. You're not going into town? No, I've got to be up for Santa's kids in the morning. Uh. I'll have a back before bed night in case she turns into a pumpkin, eh? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, you'd have to leash yourself. Don't be staying out all night. Well, I've got a quarter chaser. In this? <laughs> oh, um, yeah, I'm having a pint with Gozzy later. <laughs> with smile for the swan, ain't you? <laughs> <laughs> Come on. See you later. See ya. See ya. Yeah. See ya. So, we need another computer. Why don't you use our gems? Oh, no way, that's crap. Anyway, it hasn't got a built-in modem. Hey, well, why don't you rob one? Oh, don't be soft. We need to get our own. Oh, we are listening to money bags here. You're talking a lot of money here, you know. Gotta speculate to accumulate, guys. Brilliant. But if I spend more, then I want more back when everything's sorted and we're back trading on the net, right? So when you get one second hand, like? Billionaire. Billionaire. Who's that? He's some plank of a trekkie who lives down our road. He's mad on computers. He upgrades them and recycles them and all that stuff. How much? He sold one to a lad in our school for about 150. <laughs> That's more like it. <laughs> so we go look for Billy the Nerd then? But you remember the deal, right? All oh, right. You'd have to build yourself a gate in my back fence. Well, I think that'd be a bit of a giveaway, don't you? <laughs> Where did you leave your van? On Felton Way. Well out of sight. <laughs> it's only a hundred yard walk through the woods. Aren't you clever? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs>
You can ask to let me know about my holidays. Hey, I need to tell Susanna if we're going away. Oh, yeah. Have you changed your mind? I just don't want me money and that's all. She won't. Not if you read from her, yeah? <laughs> I wish I was away right now, somewhere like Ibiza. I like Cyprus. How about going there? Whatever, I don't care, me, so long as it's hot and the booze is cheap. It's your shout, isn't it? <laughs> what a waste of time, eh? I didn't know the nerds had gone to live in Wigan, did I? Bosco, it's been three months. Don't you even know what you know with your own neighbours? That wild goose chase cost me money in petrol, Bosco. I've only got 20 quid to last me the weekend. Why is a drinking bar, Brookie, then? No chance. You all right? Do you know, I'm just beginning to relax after the court case and everything. I feel really good. Good. Oh, God. What? I've got to tell you now, I'm not a babysit. I'll give her a ring. I'll leave it. If Susanna is in, she does call round to us. See our Emily. She often calls round on Friday nights. Are you sure? Hmm? Forget it. We're supposed to be enjoying ourselves. To relax. <laughs> we stop talking about him? Anyone think you had a thing about him? OK, fair enough. And I, I just... I see so many people like him come through my surgery every day. Professional depressives. People who just can't cope. God, who can? Well, he really is gutted about you two. Yeah, I think I get the message, Darren. He does lay it on a bit thick, though, doesn't he? I probably would do, too. That's what guys do when they're in love. Obsessed is the word. He's just hacked off because I don't love him anymore. Not even a little. There's some affection, yeah, but what's left isn't enough to sustain a marriage. Anyway, what's getting to you? I thought you were on my side. Did he put you up to talking to me? <laughs> Is that why you're so interested? Yeah, I suppose it probably did, yeah. Like, I feel sorry for Mark. I just... I want you to be happy. If you want me to be happy, stop lecturing me about Mark. Oh, my shoulders a little bit so. Next time you'll do as you're told and hold the gun properly. I was still good there, wasn't I? Yep, you've got the makings of a decent shot. Oh, this time I'm Vic. Wait till I tell him how is it? What's wrong? I think those two have got uh, things to talk about. Oh. Hey, Casey, guess what? I got 18 x 25. That's 18 out of 25. I was good there, wasn't I? Yeah, natural. <laughs> I don't know why you're messing about with guns. I think they should be banned. <laughs> I thought only paranoid policemen and hysterical politicians were into all that nonsense. What are you two having? Coffee, please. Katie? Uh, no, thanks. Mommy, race meet Ryan. I'll see you later. See ya. Mm, ruffled her feathers, have I? If you weren't a boss, I think she would like you. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been able to think of anything else all day. Me neither. Really? Really. Oh, I love the way you smell. Smell? Mm. Of wood and brick. Plaster dust and creosote. <laughs> I don't care. I love it. You'll be giving me a complex. Mm -hmm. I'll be running off to get a shower in a minute. Oh, now that's a good idea. I'll get us a couple of glasses of wine and then I'll join you. Yeah. Hmm. Off you go. <laughs> Never mind the wine. Come with me now. Oh no. I just want to lie here a bit longer. But you go. Go on, before I change my mind. Um, I think, uh... Go on, off you go. I know you're only doing it for Mark, but don't push it, OK? We might fall out. I like you too much for that. You've never said anything like that to me before. <laughs> of course I like you, stupid. Really? So much so, I'll even cook a meal for you. By God, I am honoured. <laughs> it's just a question of chucking in a bit more pasta. And anyway, liking is as far as it goes with any man from now on. I just don't want any involvement, not for a long time. Come on, you. If you don't mind me turning up a bit early. The girls have left, have they? Yes. 
There's been a change of plan, Jess. I decided to take the evening off, so uh, I won't be needing you after all. Didn't Katrina call you? No. Well, I'm sorry about that. I mean, maybe I could pay you anyway. Oh, don't be soft. Well, I'm sorry to put you out. Um, I must have a word with Katrina. I shouldn't have wasted your time like this. Don't worry about it, love. I'll see you on Monday. Yeah, fine. And I'll see you out. The smell of wood, uh, Jess, I... Uh... See if you still fancy me now. Mother, this isn't what you think. <sighs> and what about his children? What about Emily? Bye, bye, bye Daddy. I love you. Bye. bye. First one she's ever written. It's going to be a good birthday, this. It's just an excuse, Greg. You might even believe it, but it's just an excuse. What this comes down to is sex. Now, Ross only made a slip of the tongue, but he's about to pay for it. The brand new series of Friends begins next on 4. Aid. Kindly came round to do a job for me. I can see by the colour of your face what it's done for you. I needed a shower. There's a shower next door. You're naked, she's naked, and your wife's away for a week. Do you think I'm stupid? Hey, you should be out earning money tonight. My birthday present. It's all sorted, sis. Oh, aye, that'll be a first. What are you getting her? Does she want something to wear? Pink's this season's colour. Well, you could come to town if you want in the morning. I'll help you pick something. Yeah, all right. Tell you what, you take your girlfriend into town in the morning. Get her to pick me something out. Pink mini skirt. <laughs> I, I don't believe this. I'm just... I'm stunned. It is rather embarrassing. Embarrassing? Lipstick on your teeth is embarrassing. This is disgusting. And you? I'm ashamed of you. How could you do this to Margie? And Nicky? Oh, God, Nicky! How long has this been going? Was this going on while she was going all through the... It was, wasn't it? Look, I can understand how you must feel. Mother, this hasn't really got anything to do with you. I'm a grown man now. You're an animal. Like a dog in the street. The children are asleep upstairs. Your daughter was raped by a man unable to control himself. That's got nothing to do with this. It's to do with that. A man like you, put in that where it doesn't belong. Jesse, you're not comparing like with like. Nicky's been through hell. We've all been through hell. And all that time when your family needed you, you were knocking off the next door neighbour. What do you think this would do to Nicky, eh? Don't How lecture me about our Nicky. If you this again. next door. If your father was alive today. And don't bring him into it. Well, at least keep your voices down. He was a man who knew how to behave himself. And what would he say about you seeing Alec Musgrove? Us. You seeing the grandfather of the rapist? Now I've heard it all. I didn't think you could sink any lower, son. But you have. So you're denying it? Denying what exactly? Having it off with Luke Musgrove's granddad. You're not so concerned about our Nicky's feelings when you're with him, are you? God forgive you. Yeah, and you? You can't compare a friendship with what you've done. Why not? Because we're both single. Our friendship hurts no one. So why did you try and keep it a secret then? Because you knew it there, so that's why. Leave the door. I hate the way the heat builds up in here when you switch this stupid antique on. Um, wasn't this the, when I left this morning? Oh, yes, I got those gormless builders to take it off just to see how things would look. Although I did expect them to at least have the good sense to uh, leave it outside. <laughs> I know. Why don't I do that? Oh, what a splendid idea. 
Um, do you mind if I just leave the wall for tonight, though? You know, somebody, somewhere, simply must design a gadget for peeling garlic. You always used to make me do that. If a group of mates go out and sue them and get the knockback, then no one should go in, they should stick together. Yeah. We've shown the two calls there tonight. If we were ever out and there was a kick-off, you get no back up from the entry. Leo and Jerome, I can understand. But I'm surprised. What's your hurry? Don't look now, but I think I'm being followed. Hey, what are you doing back at work? I'm feeling a lot better now. You need to be careful with a baby on the way, you know, Rich. Don't worry, I'm going to the doctors for a checkup as soon as I come back from Bristol. Bristol? Yeah, me and Mike are taking Ruth back tomorrow morning. You want to take it easy? Sinbad, I'm fine. Look, we're leaving about half nine if you want to come and say bye to her. Uh, he wants me to open this place at nine tomorrow, so I'll be out here anyway. Are you sure you're up to travelling all that way? Yeah, we're just a touch of food poisoning. Nothing to worry about. I don't know about that. He seems determined to put the blame for it on us. There's not one ounce of guilt in your body, is there? What I do in my own home is my own business. Not when it affects my family, it isn't. Look, either you leave my house or you keep your voice down. It's a bit pokey, isn't it? <laughs> What's through here? My bedroom. And Nathan's. Oh, sorry. And yours? There's also a bathroom and a loo between Nathan and myself, if you'd like the full tour. This is how it's gonna look. Yep. Yeah, I can see that. You always were good at conceptualizing. Contextualizing, I seem to remember, is the problem. As in, why the hell are you living here and we're still married? Look, Mark. Are you mentally challenged, or is this the result of some childhood trauma? Pardon? Or is it a hearing incapacity, then? Darren. Well, how many times does he have to be told? About what? It's him, isn't it? Is that what's going on here? No! Don't it's... be so ridiculous. Perhaps Darren's right, you are mentally challenged. Now, whatever it is you want to say, tell me, then go. I'm sorry, I... Oh, cut it out, Mark! Just who the hell do you think you are to keep coming around it? Who the hell do you think I am, for that matter? I did not leave you so that I could get my leg over Darren or anyone else, for that matter. If I just wanted an orgasm, I could have sorted that out perfectly well without the hassle of leaving you. OK? Got it? I actually brought your diving regulator around for your trip. Just leave it there. So you, uh, did, didn't get a chance to talk to her then? I am... Um, well, I'll, I'll leave this then. So, um... Who's taking my place on, on the Red Sea trip? Jude. Thick sister. I like Jude. She'll enjoy it. Mm. Well, I'll, um... I'll be off then. Um... Have a good holiday. Yeah, thanks. So, who is he? He says he's an environmental health inspector. Well, what are you worried for? I mean, I know you ming a bit, but... Why did he follow us at this time and all the way to the close? He's coming to visit someone. No, he only knows Simbad, and he's just walked right past him. He's after me. Why? He used to be one of Simbad's lodgers, but he's a weirdo. He used to do all these strange noises. Come from his bedroom all the time. Like what? Like soaring. And stuff getting dragged all along the floor. And one time, he even come down with red stuff on his hands. Blood? It looked like. He was dead secretive. So one day, me and Simbad finally broke into his room. And what did you find? Footy programs. Thousands of Rex and footy programs. So we've just been legged by the Rex and. No, it's not funny. The point is, he caught us before we could get a proper look. Once he found out we were onto him, he just got off. I'm telling you, I was right the first time. There's something about him. All that Wrexham stuff was just a cover. He's not a Wrexham fan. He's a serial killer. 
You've got no respect for the sanctity of marriage. That's your problem. I've learnt the hard way. The sanctity of marriage is sanctimonious claptrap. For 20 years, my husband cheated on me. So you know what it feels like, then. Oh, you've upset the children now. And what about his children? What about Emily? Don't you think she'd be upset by this? And Jason? Mother, go home. What kind of example do you think he's setting him, eh? He's supposed to be getting married soon. Can't we talk about this at home? I've got nothing more to say to you. Greg, will you get that woman off my property? This might be your property, missus, but he's not. Sorry about this. Oh, she gets the apology. I suppose you've told her that you love her and all. You have, haven't you? Sorry to trouble you at this hour. Uh, Mr Moore, Environmental Health. You've come to the right place. Uh, Miss Morrissey, is she available? Usually. Go after her. Uh, is this a, a bad time? Very. Well, I do apologise, but uh, I am the bearer of glad tidings. I did expect to find you at your restaurant. Well, I know it's a new venture. This recent food poisoning outbreak could have caused you no little concern. Well, I thought you'd want to know as soon as possible. You're in the clear. Nothing to worry about. Oh, good. Charming. Anybody think it was your birthday? Oh, yeah, happy birthday. Oh, it's from Luke. You managed to get me a card and he's in prison. You can't manage it and you live here. Yeah, but you suppose he's got nothing else to do all day but look at calendars. All right. All right. What's the big idea leaving all those in the lake last night? <sighs> it's not my problem, kid. If you two can't get yourselves in the right gear for a night out on the town. We should have all gone somewhere else. I got lumps with the paranoid android all night. <laughs> Boy, you complaining to me about getting knocked back by bouncers. <laughs> yeah, please, for you. So what do you want? <laughs> well, I've been thinking about this stones and shad stuff. All right. I want out. How do you mean? I want my money back. You can't do that. It's my money. We had an agreement. Yeah, well, I've changed my mind. We've talked about this before. I thought you were all right about it. I've come to my senses. There's no money to be made from pebbles in pouches. What's that, then? Two checks made out to the disciples of Shad and there's more here. I have been waiting over a month to receive my stones of Shad. Am I the victim of a confidence trick? If I do not receive either the stones or my original check by the return of post, you will be hearing from Anne Robinson. See? I want me money. Look, the money's not the problem. Good. It's a temporary thing. We just haven't got the stones at the minute. Or the bags to put them in. I know where to get them, though. Or access to a computer. That'll all be sorted out by the end of the week. There's income coming in. That's the main thing. Look, I'll give you another week, but after that, I want the money. You'll get it. And you better not try and con me. Can I come in? I think, under the circumstances, it might be better if you found yourself a job elsewhere. Don't you? I haven't come to do your cleaning. We're in agreement, then. First thing Monday morning, I'll phone Ron Dixon and have your contract terminated. You needn't bother. I don't want to work for you. I'd rather not even see you. That suits me fine. But I think we should talk. Last night was all heat of the moment stuff, and I really think we need to discuss this in the cold light of day. And I'd rather not wash our dirty linen on the front doorstep if it's all the same to you. Hello. Bye-bye. You supposed to say hello? I'm going home today. Oh. Well, bye-bye, then. I've got to say bye to Dad. Bye-bye. <laughs> Oh, I bet you're sorry to see her go. Yeah, it's been great having her here the past few weeks. Good practice when the other fellow arrives. I know, it's really out of my concerns, everything and all, you know. But Mike and the baby. Oh, he's going to be a great dad. You'll be a great mum. Going for my scan when I get back from Bristol. Can't wait to see it. I don't feel like I'm pregnant yet. I keep thinking that it's not really there and it's just an embarrassing mistake. It's there, all right. And Auntie Katie wants to be the first to see the pictures. You'll see them, don't you worry. You'll be sick of the sight of them by the time I've finished. Right, I better go. Better check roofs, okay? Bye bye. 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 Bye bye.
Bye. You've had a terrible couple of years. You split from your husband and you've lost two children. I mean, there can be nothing, absolutely nothing worse than that. It would kill a lesser... If you've come to offer me pity... I am trying to explain the situation as I see it. And once we understand it, perhaps we can do something about resolving it. Problems are resolved, not situations. Don't you think we've got a problem? I haven't. After the terrible things you've been through, and now the pressure of two babies and a business to run, no one would deny you a little bit of... A little bit of what? You deserve something nice in your life. And I know that Greg's a very attractive man. No one knows that better than me. Except him. He's his father's son. But you are a very attractive woman. You could have any man you wanted. Ah, you're trying to flatter me into submission. What you get from Greg, you could get anywhere. Is that ordinary, is he? It hasn't been easy to come here today. But I'll do whatever it takes to keep my family together. And I'm asking you, as a woman and a mother, as someone who knows what pain and suffering this kind of thing can cause, to end it. You've got a very low opinion of your son, you know. I love my son. You seem to think he's just my lapdog. Isn't he? He's got a mind of his own. You've got nothing in common with him. Oh, you should be having this conversation with Greg. Tell him to end it. I will. He's the one who's married. You've got no moral authority over me. It's between you and him. You don't give a damn who you hurt, do you? As you said yourself, getting hurt is something I know about. Frankly, I've run out of sympathy for other people. So you just mess up their lives, like you mess up your own house? Not messing up his life. I'm the making of it. Then you leave the mess for someone else to clean up. Well, I've been cleaning up after you for months, missus. And you know what? Your toilet smells just the same as anyone else's. You're nothing special. That's not what Greg thinks. There's your keys. Give them to your next skivvy. Oh. And if you think you haven't got a problem now, you will have if Margie ever finds out. Well, that ball's in your court. I've seen that woman make mincemeat out of a PE teacher twice your size. she will leave you without a hair on your head. So if things are definitely over between you and Mark... They are definitely over. Then we're going to need a bigger flat, so where do you fancy living? I don't know, in Manchester, maybe. <laughs> Why? Oh, it was nice to be on the doorstep for work. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but New Britain is still a democracy, yes? According to Emperor Blair. Then 66% of the vote says that the doorstep is right here. Yes, but you only need 30% to rule the country. Yes, but in Manchester you'll be on Mark's doorstep. Looks like the silent majority wins again. Mm -hmm. Was I awful to him? No more than he deserved. And I can be such a bitch at times. He was devastated about not coming away with us. So he's being really nice about it. That's the trouble. He's so infuriatingly nice. If he called me a cold-hearted bitch and told me where to shove my diving regulator, life would be so much easier. So that's the secret, then, to be nice? Up to a point. But nothing's going to get to me for at least five years. And that's it. I'm celibate. Five years? It's a hell of a long time to wait. I know what I mean. After all this aggravation, I'm not interested in any man, no matter how nice he may be. Ah, right. So, how about you? Nah, men have never done anything for me. No, you know what I mean. Who are you taking on holiday as a comfort blanket? Do you mind? No, otherwise we'd have stopped you years ago. So go on, what type this time? Blondie, giggly, curvy, dopey? Oh, please, you make it sound like we're going on holiday with Snow White and the Seven Dwarves. Might as well. It's the only fairy tale ending we're ever going to get. What, Mike is supposed to be going with you? Yeah, he is, but he's gone to see his dad, so we're going to pick him up on the way. Oh, now is, Ron. Still suffering, I hope. A lot better, apparently. Yeah. Since today's just gone from bad to worse. Listen, I wish I was going with you, you know. Yeah, I wish you could take my place. I'm dreading telling my mum about Ruth drinking that bleach. What? No need to worry, because I've already explained it to her over the phone, so everything's sorted. Oh, you didn't have to. Hey, she's my responsibility. I'm a dad. Don't forget me, will you? Come back and see me soon. Bye-bye, darling. Okay. Bye-bye, Daddy. Bye. Say hello to your mummy. What's up with you? Nothing. I've just been watching you. You fell in a there. It's a garage. 
What are you doing with me? Just been watching him say goodbye to his little girl. Bye. You start off so innocent. Your whole life ahead of you. And then. What? You get dumped on. I mean, what's that innocent little kid ever done to deserve being separated from a family? Is this about your Luke? Yeah. Look, you get in, I'll go and pay for the petrol. What's up with you? Didn't recognise the handwriting. Me mum. Oh, she sent it through the post. First one she's ever written. It's gonna be a good birthday, this. I thought I told you to stay in there with Mr. Moore. There's no way I'm staying in there with him on my own. Did you make him a cup of tea like I told you? Yeah. <sighs> Gotta keep on the right side of him. We're not just dealing with the health inspector here, you know. Too right, we're not. We're dealing with the health inspector with a grudge. Anyway, I suppose we better get back in, in case he plants a rat in the deep fat fryer. Hi, Mr. Moore. See Tim's box you're off with a cuppa? Yes, a thoughtful gesture, Timothy. Just one tiny cavil. What? There is a chip in the mug. Want a piece of fish with that? Very good, Timothy. Yes, a little levity always brightens a busy day. However, I would be failing in my duty if I didn't point out the germs that congregate in a cracked coffee cup. Staphylococcus aureus springs immediately to mind. Yeah, well, only the staff drink out the mugs, you know. Let's live dangerously. So, how's it going, then? Oh. I will report my findings in the fullness of time, Mr. Sweeney. But I, I can confirm at this stage that Chips with Everything is a prime suspect. Did you like it? Yeah, you've got really good taste. It's the first time anyone said that's one of Ryan's girlfriends. So what do you think, then? I think my dad will kill you if he sees you wearing it. Ryan bought me. You'll kill him and all. Katie picked it. Still no sign of anything from you, then? Yeah, I went to a lot of trouble for this, Betty. I popped my ears blowing all in blooms up. <sighs> Come on. Hang on, where are you going? Out. No, but we're having a big family meal when me mum and dad get back from work. I'm sorry, I'm not in the mood for big family meals. Oh, come on, Ryan, don't spoil it. It's my birthday. Oh, Luke's in jail. Doesn't that spoil it? Come on, Katie, I'll buy you a drinking bar, Brookie. Why is he in such a bad mood? He's awake, isn't he? I think he's got Luke on his mind. I'll go and see if I can persuade him to come back later. Happy birthday. So, How did you get yourself into this mess, son? It's only a year ago you were all holier than thou about Katrina having an abortion. Now, you should be on my side. Why? You're my mother, not Margie's. I can't take your side in this. You never even tried to listen to my side. Well, I'm here now. Tell me. There's no need to be like that to Kelly. I bought her a present, didn't I? Look, it'll be fine, you know. You'll be out in a few weeks, and then those weeks will be days before you know it. Look, I'm sorry. I know I've been a bit moody today. It's OK. I think it's sweet. What's sweet about it? Well, all this cause you saw Simbad saying goodbye to Ruth. I have no idea you're so sensitive. So can we go back for jelly and ice cream later? I suppose. Me and Margie have been drifting apart. You'll never find a better woman than Margie. Are you going to listen or what? Go on. Margie's been that busy lately with this job. I hardly ever see her, and when I do, she's knackered. I mean, I'm not saying it's her fault. But we've been having problems. And when our Nicky got, you know, it just went from bad to worse. It hasn't been easy for any of us. I know that, but nobody ever thinks about me. I'm treading on eggshells in my own house. Something comes on the telly, a girl gets attacked. I don't know whether to talk about it, ignore it, switch it off. Whatever I do, there's an atmosphere. I have to think twice about everything I say. It's not like that with Susanna. I can relax, I can talk. You can talk to Margie. She's never here. You can talk without taking your clothes off. It's just an excuse, Greg. You might even believe it, but it's just an excuse. What this comes down to is sex. What if it does? I'm a man, that's all. No better or worse than any other man. I've got needs. It's not easy having sex with Margie when Nicky's been raped and she's in the next room. Oh, and next door's miles away, is it? It's a different world. And you don't belong there. But because I'm just a builder, you don't think I'm good enough for her? You're 
ten times better. I'm not just some labourer to her. It's just sex. It's not. You're just a bit of rough. It's more than that. How much more? Oh, God. Are you going to tell Margie? Is that all you care about? Getting caught? Are you going to tell her? You'll just have to wait and see, won't you? Well? Well, what? Have you told her it's all over? The reason why my nan hasn't said anything about what went on between her and Susanna is because it's private. I don't want to spoil your visions of a hard-done-to nanny, but I wasn't planning on taking you. The interviews are all about selling yourself. I'll give it a few tips. Oh, I'll never forgive myself for what I've done. Coming up, have you caught the bug yet? A modern makeover for a classic car. Driven bowls along in the new Beetle, next. <laughs>